Hello, so in last video we saw how can we call login API using IICS mapping and basically this was the mapping which we had created and using this web service transformation we called that login API. Moment we call that login API it returns us the JSON object and out of many fields of that JSON object particularly two fields which we are interested in server URL and session ID. So let me save this guy and if I run this mapping now the two fields which I am talking about those two fields let me do one thing those two fields we are storing in this table right so let me truncate this table all right so my table is empty and if I run my mapping now it will whatever uh, JSON object which that API will return out of that entire JSON object particularly two fields session ID and server URL we are storing in our target table so it will return one row okay let's see perfect now in this video we are going to see using this particular session ID value how can we trigger the other say uh, other uh, API uh, to run the uh, task flow all right so if I go back so in the postman right so this is the API to run task flow Java transpose right so this is the task flow let me go back and if I So this is the task flow which we had created. All right, what this task flow does is it reads the value from one temp table and transpose that into a final table. So what I will do, right? I will trigger this, uh, trigger that task flow. All right, so what values we had to pass, remaining all values are constant except the session ID. So we just now got this session ID. I will copy this guy paste it here and I will call this API so basically this API will trigger that task flow so if I go back it's still working on that could not okay let me call it again perfect now if I go back I should see that see the workflow is running now basically it will insert the record into this target table it's still running okay, it's already ran so now whatever uh, things which we did so far right it's all manual I mean the API this this API which we call right that's all manual process so instead what we can do is now in our mapping so if I go back to my mapping let me close this task flow so in this mapping so far we are retrieving that session ID and that session ID is needed to call the other API which uh, calls our uh, task flow all right so what we'll do I will call another web service transformation and I will pass that incoming session ID so that it will trigger the task flow from our mapping itself we don't need any manual intervention like we don't need to call that task flow API from our postman right so again so in order to call the API again so I will have another so if I go back to my mapping I will have another uh, web service transformation in between all right so what I will do I don't want to uh, change the existing mapping instead of what I will do I will go back and make a copy of it okay so so this why this is my current mapping and copy to YouTube videos keep both and I will rename this guy so rename calling API and task flow java transpose okay so let me open the mapping 
Now, as I said, we had to call another API, right? So we had to call this API, entire API. So how can we call the API using web service transformation? What I will do, let me do one thing. And it will, the input will be the session ID. So that's a root, big success. Now I will rename this to WS and call uh, uh, task task flow task flow API Java transpose. I will save it. Now uh, if I go back here. Incoming fields is fine. So basically session ID, which we are going to pass. Now for this web service, we need to, uh, for the connection, right? We had to create a business service. Uh, okay, business service connection. In order to have a business service connection, we need to have a swagger file. All right, so let's go ahead. So basically these are the steps, right? So these two things which uh, we are we need, right? For our new API. So let me go back to, let me see if I have saved it. I have saved it. Let me go back to, administrator and I will create a new swagger file so this was the old swagger file which we had created so I will create a new one S, um, SWF uh, okay, I will use RT API so run task flow or maybe uh, IICS run task flow uh, Java transpose. All right. To run task flow name Java transpose. Okay. So task flow API I will give. This is all fine. Now if I go back, this is a post method. So we'll give post. My entire API call is like this. So as we had seen, we split that in multiple parts, right? So this is my entire API. This is my main URL. Okay, let me go back. That's my URL, runtime environment. That's the base path and that's the actual API. Perfect. I don't need this user ID password. Uh, except headers. Okay, let's go back. Let's see what other information we had to pass. So these are, this is a header section. I will copy this guy. Now, I don't want these cookies. Okay, so only one thing in my header section or in that JSON object is session ID, right? Perfect. Uh, I guess, yeah, and operation ID, let's say, give something random. So ending with 999, okay? Save it. Okay, my swagger file got saved successfully. Now, as we saw earlier, in order to create the connection, I need to download that swagger file and give that path, uh, store it in my local, on my local machine and give that path while creating the connection. So I'll go back. So this is my swagger file. I will download it. Ending with 999. I will copy this guy. Go back to IICS folder. Okay, so this is the guy. Now let me go ahead and create the connection. So new connection. Uh, connection. Okay, I will use this connection swagger file IICS run task flow API. And it's a REST API. Runtime environment authentication standard. And as we saw, the only thing which we have to specify here is the path of our swagger file. So let me go back. So 
agar file and the actual file name ending with 9999 perfect so far so good let me test the connection it's successful let me save it okay so we have done these two things now we'll go ahead and create the business service so let me go to oops i think i has unsaved save let me just check the connection if i uh yeah run task load this is the one test connection okay let me go back to data integration go to business service under components new components business service now i will name business service okay so we will be running this task flow right business service run task flow it's under youtube folders that is fine connection name swagger file run task flow all right select option i have to select that nine ending with 999 correct that's the operation id now if i click on configure right so it will tell us like what input is required as as we say saw here right we okay, let me close this. we are passing the session id that's the uh, input which is needed that's the mandatory thing okay and what response we get so we response we get is run id so if i go back so that's that's the response it gives right that's the json only one uh, field there run id okay in that object so this is all looks good i will save it okay so far so good let me go back and let me open the mapping youtube videos this okay no no not this one I had to open the mapping instead I clicked on business service component okay oh. says invalid because our target is not yet connected that's okay so this is fine I will go incoming fields so this is a session ID which we supposed to pass to the next transfer or uh, second web service so let me select the web service oops sorry I need I am supposed to select business service so that's the one operation that's the operation id which we specified okay so request mapping so this is the session id which we are getting from previous transformation or previous web service now response okay so the only one uh, field uh, is available is run id right when we have the success response that's the only field uh which we are having in the re response object so that is this so far so good i will save this guy now in target so let me connect this one to target i will select root that is a success and in my target now uh i will keep this uh, table as is which is fine and in my fields map uh, mapping section uh, let me unmap everything okay and uh, the first Im uh, important thing is run id so that's the thing which we are getting from second web service transformation and we still have old values like i will map this anyway server session and maybe let's say username all right save i hope my mapping will be valid now yeah it is and before i trigger the mapping what we'll do is let me trigger let me truncate both the tables okay so this guy as well as this guy and all right so what should happen when i will run this mapping so there are two web service transformation the first web service transformation will fetch session id and server url information and that will get populated into 
temp XML. Now, no, I, I'm sorry, it will not be because now I have moved it here. So now the first, there are two uh, web service transformation. So first web service transformation will give me the session ID and that session ID I am passing to second web service transformation and using so using that session ID basically we are triggering the second workflow what that workflow will do is it will uh, so this is what will happen what that workflow will do is that workflow will pull the records from temp1 okay and it will transpose and insert into temp2 okay and finally at end of the mapping in at target we should have uh, entries loaded into temp xml so let's see how it goes so i will run the mapping next run okay I will close this guy because internally it should call the task flow. So let's see if that task flow is getting triggered. Okay, so task flow got triggered. The prior mapping is still running. Let me see. It has inserted the six records and I will go back. And even the mapping got succeeded. Now let's go and, so first let's see uh, if temp, uh, temp two has any records it does it has six records and finally uh, so this is the session id okay and this is the server url so using this session id basically uh, this value got passed to second web service transformation in, or, in order to run the workflow all right so thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video